Hey everybody, something slightly different today. It's kind of a cross between a vlog and a Metalworks video because I need to work on this. Um, but I'm just cleaning it basically because this is the big clock as you will know. You've seen I've, I've, I've said I'd finished it but I was like actually I haven't really because I need to clean it. Um, but I also need to photograph this today because I need to get this online. Um, but I thought I'd talk about something else while I'm doing it. Because you know what can I really teach you about cleaning stuff. I've actually weighed it now. It's uh, 7.8 kilos with the clock on it. First thing, I'm just going to get the airline and clean these out. Man, is it cold out here today. I hope it warms up a bit. Uh, so, what I want to talk about is, did you see... You can't have missed. Well, actually, no, you probably could have missed, because it's sad how few people watched it or have watched the video since. Um, but the Elon Musk SpaceX, you know, the launch of the Tesla into orbit around Earth and then Mars and backwards and forwards for the next billion years or so. Um, I think it's an absolutely amazing achievement. You know, it's a real step forward for us. The space race for us has been really, well, it's not really gone anywhere for a long time. Yeah, we've done a lot of sort of sending things out to planets like Mars, rovers and stuff like that, but the actual work towards getting there seems to have stagnated and it almost seems like NASA's shutting down, like they don't really know what they're doing. But so to see a company succeed so quickly, it's 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 good to see. It's you know it fills you with hope for the future. It's not going to make a difference to our living futures, but at least for the human race, the thought that we could actually be an interplanetary species at some point, which would be great for us because you know we're messing this planet up. Having said that, do we do we really want to be an interplanetary species? We're just going to go and mess up another place. Let's hope we learn. Aye. But, um, oh god, man, I've been looking online and I've seen people claiming it's fake already. Jesus, seriously? Oh, oh, it's like the moon land, it's like people saying they're fake. The best, the best sort of comebacks I've seen for that, other than the fact there's a retro reflector there that anyone can, like, shine a light off of, and even though that they've now done aerial footage of it, and even though every, everything, we know we went to the moon, for Christ's sake. There's a sketch by uh, the people who do Peep Show. What was their names? Those two. I can't remember their flipping names. But the ones who do the Peep Show. And it's like a board meeting and them faking the moon landings. And they're basically going through it saying like, well, we're going to need a rocket to convince them. And then we're going to need this. And then they sort of go through everything that you're going to need to fake it. And they're like, well, hang on a minute. Isn't it just going to cost as much as sending the rocket to the moon anyway? They're like, well, yes. <laughs> the other thing I've seen people saying is... Um, you know, oh look at these scientists, they've they've spent all this money developing this and all they've gone and done and stuck a car in space. And it's like, yeah, it was a test. They needed a payload, it wouldn't make a difference if they filled it with, you know, the same weight in rubber chickens. Although I think it would be a bit difficult on, you know, dense tin mass to fit all those rubber chickens in there. But you know what I'm saying. It was just a test and it was a fantastic publicity stunt. I mean, if they'd sent up a, you know, a box that was the same as something that would be in there, won't get any attention, but sending a car up there, you know, it makes Tesla seem cooler, more people buy Teslas, Elon Musk makes more money, and uh, the money goes into, like, SpaceX and stuff like that, so it's... I like Elon Musk, he's, he's almost like the uh, Tony Stark, as it were, of, of the modern world. You know, the cool, rich, relatively young guy, except he's not creating weapons. What's nice about these clocks is they actually age and they look better with age. After I've cleaned this up, it's going to look shiny and new, yeah. But in a few days' time, it's going to get a bit of sort of patina and discolouring over the different metal surfaces, and it'll look fantastic. The next thing I want to talk about is more metalworks related, which is to do with safety in the workshop. Um, and I did make a post on my social media about this, and it's just to say, people, uh, calm down on the telling me to be overly safe thing. Now, let me explain. I'm not someone who's not used to being around dangerous things. Um, as a child, I was shooting shotguns at the age of five and six. I was driving 40 knot speedboats at the age of 10. I was riding motorcycles at 12. You know, I've been around um, heavy machinery and plant stuff ever since I was a kid because of stuff to do with my old family business. I've been brought up using tools and seeing equipment used. I have a lot of experience in using, you know, dangerous tools and doing things that can get you hurt. I mean, I was, a, I was also, you know, I ran a petrol station for three years. That's very risky. And I was a chef for seven years. 
Which is also another very risky job, if you weren't aware of that. And I am, I'm still here and I still have ten fingers and toes. So don't worry about my safety. If I do things you don't like the look of, don't do them. But I don't do things uncalculated. Of course this is the internet and you're never ever going to end all of that, but I, I just, as, an, as a friendly sort of, just I'll mention it once, respect my uh, intelligence please when it comes to some of these things. And also check your facts with some of these things, because you know, it's like I've had some comments of people saying, for Christ's sake, use gloves when you're using an angle grinder. God, no! Don't do that! Now, this is a bit of a, you know, some people will maybe disagree with me, but I know a lot of people agree with me. When it comes to things like angle grinders, lathes, mills, you do not wear gloves. Because if you get caught by it, yeah, you might lose a finger. You can carry on working. You have a glove on, and it can take your entire hand off. It can take all your fingers off. Uh, the glove is not going to stop something like that. Now, when I do wear gloves when I use an angle grinder, is when I'm using a, um, a wire wheel, for reasons you've previously seen. But when I do that, I am incredibly aware of the fact that I'm wearing gloves. I keep my hands right back on the uh, grinder and on the handle, and I don't move them. And oh, another one I've been told is don't blow my hands or myself with an airline um, because you can cause yourself self an air embolism where you basically force air into your skin, into your bloodstream. Um, I have replied to the guy directly and he does come from, you know, he works in this industry, in, in industry of using equipment. Um, but this this is, a, is like less than 90 PSI. It's on a 40 foot, like one of those retractable things. There is very little pressure behind this, and also, if you actually read into air embolisms caused by high pressure air, it normally requires an open wound. And I'm not putting it against my hand, I'm using it to blow stuff off me, which is something that people have always done, it's called a shop shower. Um, I, you know, I, ha I, I blow my face and my hair off to get metal filings off of me. So yes, it is factually true that you can cause yourself damage by using an airline on your skin, but not something like that. Well, let's okay. Well, let's put it in a different way. I will continue doing it because I believe that you know shop air is not high enough, and I don't like put it on my hand and go. Ee! There's also a bit of an argument sometimes about eye protection because some people will say, you know, oh yes, we should always protect your eyes, and other people say, well, if I wear goggles and they steam up, I'm more likely to lose a finger, and then someone will say, well, you know it's better to lose a finger than it is an eye. And yeah, I can, all those arguments are kind of right. It, it's down to people to take their own risks. That's another thing. You don't, you're not responsible for other people's risks. But then like with the guy with the airline, he said, you know, he felt remiss if he didn't mention it. And I can, I, I can, I can understand. But I think most of you watch this and know me for long enough to know that I'm not actually an idiot, I don't think. You know, I never claim to be an expert. I never claim to know everything about everything, but I'm, my head's screwed on straight, all right? <laughs> and then if I do, because this is the thing, I know people say, oh, now you're tempting fate. Yeah, if something happens, you know, I lose a finger or something because I wasn't doing something right or I was doing something a bit silly, that's my problem. You know, it's a risk. Everything's a risk. Riding motorcycles is a risk. But anyway, I don't wish to moan, um, and I'm not having a go. I do appreciate people are concerned for my safety, but maybe you just don't realise the background that I've had in my life. and. I've always just, I've always been around mechanical stuff. I want to clean in between these better, but God knows what I'm going to get in there. But I've just had a thought. String? If I've got some natural fibre string around. I introduced the Spicer 110 cleaning saw. So basically a coping saw with a piece of natural fibre string put in between so I can do this. Oh, come on, it's, it's that's good, isn't it? the string up with oil. In a minute after I've done this I'm going to show you a tool that I had arrived today which, oh my god, it saved me so, well, I hope it's going to save me so much time. I had a little go with it and it seems to work perfectly but I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, once again thank you if you're watching this video because you are, as I say, part of the minority and I really mean the minority now. We're down to like about 500 people watch each one of these videos, but it's nice in a way. It kind of feels like I have a much smaller community again. So, you know, when people comment, I see they're coming back every time. And, you know, that's the frustrating thing. You know there's people out there who, who would enjoy it and would like it, but it's just getting it in front of their eyes for them to see. And it's like, how do you do that on YouTube? And truly, the answer is you just keep making videos and hope 
that they're interesting enough or good enough that they start bringing new people in. Or that YouTube shows favour on you for some reason and starts actually promoting your videos to your subscribers. For, for a start. Oh, I haven't shown you because it was so difficult to actually show it, but the welds are inside here have all been sanded down and rounded. I'm showing that. Let me try this. C can you see in there? It's... Can you? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I've cleaned them up. You know, I could polish this up with like a polishing wheel and really make it shine, but I don't like that look. I like the industrially sort of used look with the marks and everything of it being used in the past, um, embracing its imperfections. As actually someone that brought, I didn't know about this type of Japanese art, I'll admit, but I have since looked into it, called Wabi Sabi, or something like that. Reno would probably kill me for the pronunciation of that, but it's, yeah, whatever. It's like Wabi Sabi, which basically is the embracing imperfections in things and seeing the beauty in imperfections in individualism. Which is very much what, you know, the, the ethic behind my clocks is. There's, a, there's another thing behind it which, you know, it, uh, some people say I'm getting a little bit too deep into it, but I think there is inherent beauty in something that's engineered. You know, this, all these parts look the way they look because that's the way they needed to be designed to do the job that they needed to do. There's no, there's no like ego, there's no aesthetic flair to the way that this looks. Um, but then when you take those things and you join them together, they just become this one thing that all of a sudden seems to work together as if it was supposed to be that thing. It's like, you know, taking something that's completely functional and turning it into something that's completely... Well, it is, well a clock is functional, but, you know, it's completely... It's more about form than the function. I'll probably get stick for saying that, but I think there's more artistic merit in what I've just said about that than, uh, you know, someone's used bed, you know, or, or a cow cut in half. If you're watching this far into the video, you're probably enjoying it, so would you consider supporting the channel by grabbing a keychain? There's a links in the description to my Etsy store, just go there and you'll, you'll see them. They're made out of real motorcycle chains by my own fair hands, and it helps support me and the channel, so if you say if you're enjoying the videos, please consider it. If not, maybe consider just leaving a like, I always appreciate that. Okay, in honour of uh, SpaceX, I have called this the BFC. Uh, if, you've, if you know anything about SpaceX and the, uh, the BFR, you will know what that stands for. <laughs> so I'm going to call this the BFC number one, because I'm going to be making some big clocks in the future, and these aren't like the other clocks. Maybe they do need to be subcategorised in my uh, serial numbers. I think that would actually be quite a good idea. So maybe this is going to become BFC number one. Oh yeah, I've been asked if I sign my clocks. Of course I do. Uh, a very kind subscriber of mine sent me a Dremel engraver, which was a lot better than using the scribe that I used to use. So what I do is on the aluminium part or a soft part that I can actually gra um, so engrave into, I put Spice 110, the year it was made, and its individual serial number. Anyway, that's now done, so I can put that together and I can photograph it. How I'm going to do that, I don't know. <laughs> Over the next few days I'm going to be doing a ton of metalwork stuff, uh, but it's going to be quite repetitive because I'm going to be making a load of clocks. I've basically selected, I've got about 10 discs that I'm going to clean up and turn into clocks and I really want to try and get those made in a good amount of time. So I've got stock sat on the store uh, and hopefully I'll sell a few that will help me out. But to that end I've bought myself something that hopefully is going to save me quite a lot of time, um, which is this, which is a rotary compass cutter. I, I didn't know these things actually existed, I just hoped they did and went looking for one and found this one and it was on Amazon for about 14 quid. I'll put a link in the description as well over for the cutting mat which is about 6 quid. Uh, but basically it allows you to cut perfect circles, or relatively perfect, perfect circles. These are the templates I make as I've shown you before. Um, these I've cut by hand and obviously that takes quite a while. Because I have so many clocks that I'm doing, I will start with an outer one. So basically the way this thing works is you've got the compass spike there, you've got a cutting blade here which gets covered, it's just like a circular razor, and this ratcheting centre point. So what you have to do is put the centre in the centre, like so, put the cutter on the edge, and lock it down.
Hmm. Ever so slightly off. Oh, please don't be a massive failure. I don't want to have to do this by hand still. I need to do this. I need centre ones as well, so I've got a chance to redo this. It's kind of wandered slightly. It doesn't really, really matter because I round things off. But and it is so much faster. It's probably fine to be fair. And that's not the second time I've used it. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll work out a better way of using it. As you may have seen before, I was asking for questions on my social media to do like quick Q and A's while I'm doing videos like this, where I don't have a lot to really teach you or too much of new things to show you. I'm talking a lot, so. I'm going to change the way I do it and I'm going to say leave a comment on this video and I'll answer it in the next one. Well, not guaranteed, but I'll pick some out to answer. So pretty much every video, if you've got a question you want to ask me, it may get cons uh, get answered in the next video. Come on. Well, this has already saved me about 10 minutes. <laughs> And of course, there's always the possibility, I suppose, that my printer is not feeding the paper through at exactly the right rate, and this isn't exactly circular. I guess there's always a... I haven't really considered that, but it's always an option, I suppose. Okay, you can go around a couple of times. I think that'll do for today because we're already at quite a long video and we've talked about a few different subjects and things. Um, I will do videos as I'm going through these clocks, maybe some of the cleaning, talk about some other things, so leave those questions and we'll, uh, we'll keep doing this. Because the, the idea, if you haven't noticed on the channel, is that I'm uploading um, a Metalworks video one day, then a bike video the next day, then a Metalworks video the next day, and it seems to be working out okay-ish, apart from no one's watching the Metalworks videos, but for the few that do, you are appreciated like you wouldn't believe I nearly forgot I was going to give you the answer to that question about the clock hands and why they're always in the same time position when they sell clocks. It's a simple answer. Uh, the reason they're always at 10 to 2 or 10 past 10 is because it looks like the clock is smiling. No seriously, the human brain perceives that as a smile and it makes clocks sell easier apparently. Uh, that's what they say. Anyway, uh, this is a clock that is available at my Etsy store at the moment. I'm just taking a new picture of it. Much love. Catch you next time.